Hi, I'm Noam Royce. And I'm Insu Kim Bird. Welcome to our videotape, Solutions Step by Step. In this videotape, like in our book of the same title, Solutions Step by Step, Insu and I are going to show you solution-focused therapy, solution-focused therapy techniques in typical clinical situations with clients uh, who are harmfully uh, using drugs and alcohol. Let me say a little bit about the solution-focused therapy. The most important characteristic of this model is very much future-focused. Since we believe the future is created and future is also negotiated, we are paying attention to clients' notion of how they want their life to be different. Um, what is their idea? What is their idea of how, what is the desirable way for them to be? Our second point is, the, therefore, the client generates their own ideas about how they want their life to be. Oftentimes, when we meet the client for the first time, they have no idea because this is something they have never thought about. And they are very preoccupied about what has happened to them. And so through this process of a conversation with therapists, they arrive at, how do I want in my life that is not there right now? And so this is very important for those clients that we see uh, that are mandated into right. treatment, the so-called involuntary client. Right. Uh, these are clients that have been told over and over and over again uh, what they have to do, mm -hmm. uh, including that they have to come to therapy, mm -hmm. uh, highlighting their uh, homegrown experiences, their homegrown solutions is a vital uh, part of how this works. Right. So that brings us to the third point of the model, that is that we absolutely believe that clients do have strengths and resources and solutions. Oftentimes they have own solutions to their own difficulties, but again, they are not aware that they have these until we engage them in conversation in such a way that they will discover their own solutions and uh, that they do have they do know what to do uh, the the first point is because of this the whole approach to working with clients tend to be very very optimistic that they do they can change their future that their future is in their hands they do know what to do about it and as a result of that uh, many clients tell us how respectful this approach is of them and of their ability. Um, and so uh, it uh, results in a very, very res mutually respectful way to work with people in some very tough situations. Well, Insu, we've got a couple of miles of videotape to show. Yes. Uh, what we've done is uh, grouped uh, clinical situations into um, question types. Uh, what we're going to be showing you are questions about pre-session change, about exceptions to the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be showing uh, questions about goal negotiation and mm -hmm. how we do this with clients. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll show you questions about knowing. How does the client know something is different? How do mm -hmm. people around the client know that the client is capable of the changes? Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to be showing you a couple of different ways of uh, asking and following up on the miracle question. Mm -hmm. uh, scaling questions, a wide variety of scaling questions are going to be presented. And then some follow-up questions. Um, we'll, we'll show you uh, what are logical ways to follow up uh, to uh, some of these questions that we ask clients. Since you are, many of you are very interested in how does this model apply in working with groups, especially uh, DWI uh, driving while um, intoxicated. Intoxicated. <laughs> Forget the name. Uh, the what? How does these different kinds of techniques, uh, different kinds of asking uh, questions, how does it work in a group setting? 
we also will show you and again highlight these techniques as they appear. We're going to highlight in the bottom of the screen so you will be able to follow those techniques. Okay, it, uh, I didn't get much information uh, on you before uh, this meeting. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about uh, why you're here? Well, um, basically, me and my girlfriend had a fight. Yeah. It, it, is, it was really a silly fight. It was over a guy calling the house for her, and I yeah. asked, I asked her a simple question, who he was, and she really, I felt that she was lying, okay. so I said that she was lying. Okay. And it excelled to an argument, and then eventually to me hitting her a couple of times. Okay. Okay. And uh, and so you've got to be here because you hit right. her. Well, yes, my um, probation officer referred me to you. Okay. 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 So your probation officer wants to see something happen. Yes, he says that. I need to see what the problem is with my temper. Okay. Okay. Well, let me ask this uh, this visit worthwhile for you. I make you say, you know, okay, I'm glad I came to see that guy. Um, honestly, I'm a 21-year-old man. I don't think anything you could do for me in an hour could change hmm. me. Okay. Okay. Um, but let's say it did. Let's just pretend for a moment. Let's say it did. It, it, this was some kind of a different hour, and something, something caused you to walk away from there saying, well, that wasn't that bad. Well, what might that be? Um, mm, that's hard to say. Yeah. Um, I really don't, like I said, I really don't see anything that could. But I'm open-minded. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm here, so I might as well try to get something out of it. Okay. Okay. So, so you've got some ideas that you want to get something out of this. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now you've got me kind of uh, curious as to what that might be that you could get out of this. Uh, well, actually, I. My problem is I tend to be in a play in the wrong place at the wrong time. I don't feel like I'm a bad guy. I just yeah. tend to be caught up in a lot of different situations. Mm -hmm. Wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I understand your name is Terrence? Yes, it uh -huh. is. And I understand you are 21 years old? Yes. Uh -huh. Who do you live with? I live with my grandmother. Ah, uh -huh. oh, your grandmother. Yes, I do. Uh -huh. Well, she was kind of noticing me as I've been drinking recently and doing drugs and everything. Uh -huh. And she seems kind of depressed that I've gone to this and really? I haven't been able to stop it. And I've tried to get help. You have? But, yes, I have. But uh -huh. it seems like nothing has been helping me. Is that right? Yes. Uh -huh. So you've been thinking a lot about what might be helpful. Yes, I have. You have. Uh -huh. So you have given some thoughts about that. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. So what? Your, it was your grandmother's idea or your idea? or? Uh, well, it was part my idea because I see the way she is. She just doesn't like me to be this way. And I think uh -huh. it would be better off for her and for me uh -huh. if I just get off the drugs and try to go straight is that and right? get, hold a job for a while. Whoa. Uh-huh. So, how did this happen that you made up your mind about this? Well, how did it happen I made up my mind? Yeah, that, that you're going to get a job yeah. and you're going to stop uh, drugs and drinking and all that. I just basically need a change because drugs are just bad for everybody. It's been bad for me seeing myself waking uh -huh. up in the morning, uh -huh. headaches and yeah. just not feeling good. Uh -huh. Try to get a little healthier. So really? I can live a long life. Uh -huh. So you want to become healthier? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, and what? You said you wanted to get a job? Yes. Uh -huh. And also you want to stop drinking? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. 
and what else? How else can I be helpful to you today? Just to stop the drugs, basically, that's all. Uh -huh. Just to help me. Okay. So I gather you do both drugs okay, exactly. and drinking alcohol. and alcohol. Uh -huh. yeah. Which is more urgent problem for you? Which do you want to stop first? Drugs or alcohol? Um, the drugs. I mean, the drugs. Stop first, yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. And how did you arrive at, at this decision about drug has to go first? I mean, there's, there's a lot more death involved in drugs. and uh -huh. I mean, it's pretty serious. The cocaine right. and... Yeah. And then next, drug dealers are on you trying to get the money from you. And right. If I don't have the money to pay, they might kill me. And oh, so you have had some scary situations. Yeah, scary in a sense uh -huh. with them. Uh -huh. What can I do that's going to be helpful for you this afternoon? Well, I uh, had called to set up the appointment because... Um, I would really like to save our marriage, and yeah. I think we're really in uh, a lot of trouble. Okay. Um, Bruce has a problem with drinking, mm -hmm. and I think I think he would admit it. Um, he's done some jail time. We were separated for a while. We've recently okay. gotten back together. Okay. Um, okay. So and there's just been some problems. You're living together now. Right now, yeah. Right now, you, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't know if, been, if we can you've continue. You've been separated just a, what, like a little bit ago? About or? four months, yeah. You were separated for about four months, mm -hmm. and now you're back together for how long? Uh, a couple of weeks. Yeah, a short of period. Weeks. I just got out of jail. Okay, okay. you just got out of jail. Mm -hmm. Now, was that the separation while you were in jail, or was that different? Uh, a little, little bit before that. A little bit before, so a little bit before you went to jail, you were separated? About three months before okay. uh, they put me in jail. Uh, we were separated, yes. Okay, okay. And then you went to jail, and you're all done with that now? Mm -hmm. uh, there are some uh, court orders that I need to follow up on, okay. but yeah, I'm out of jail now. Okay, okay. And you want to save the marriage? Yes. Okay. We have two children. Two kids? Um, two girls. Little boys or girls? Two girls. Two girls, okay. Melissa and Heather. Melissa and Heather, okay. Okay, and you, how old are they? Um, Melissa is seven and Heather is five. Okay, seven and five. They're youngsters. They're, yeah. Okay. Okay, now, what, um, what gives you the idea that uh, saving this marriage is going to be a good thing? Well, we've been married eight years. We have two children. Um, we've been through an awful lot, mm -hmm. and... Um, I, I, I still love him, okay. but um, I'm asking myself the same thing. I'm asking myself, is it worth it? Okay, and you, your answer to that question? 